So far we have discussed momentum transfer and heat transfer and we have also worked uh, what would be the type of transport, how can we express mathematically the transport inside a boundary layer, a hydrodynamic boundary layer and inside a thermal boundary layer. For the case of hydrodynamic boundary layer, we have seen how to obtain an analytical solution by converting a PDE which was originated out of the simplification of Navier-Stokes equation for flow inside a boundary layer on a flat plate. So, we use the method of combination of variables to obtain not only the velocity v x and v y inside the boundary layer, but also the gradients of velocity or at y equals 0 that means at the liquid solid interface which was then used to obtain an expression for the friction coefficient C f. We then proceeded for solution of the or treatment of the turbulent boundary layers and in turbulent boundary layers we saw that the situation became so complicated that it is not possible even to write the governing equations the statistical aids uh, the having an universal velocity profile which should be valid in all regions of turbulent flow for flow over, even for a flow over a flat plate is extremely difficult. So, we have seen uh, dividing the flow regime into three layers like viscous sublayer, the transition region and a turbulent core for the case of pipe flow. For each of these regions there was a velocity profile and there was also an entirely empirical velocity profile known as the 1 7th power law which can be used to fit the experimentally data specially for those points situated near the center. However, this expression even though it fits the data well it fails on the solid wall because it, it you cannot evaluate the gradient of the velocity at y equals 0 that means on the flat plate using 1 7th power law that was a major limitation. So, then we proceeded to obtain a momentum integral approach an integral approach which resulted in a momentum integral equation and there with some approximation with an assumed value assumed expression of velocity profile where the constants were evaluated with the with the boundary conditions that we have on the plate namely no slip condition and at the edge of the boundary layer that means where the velocity in the x direction would be equal to the free stream velocity and the velocity profile approaches the free stream with zero slope using these conditions and assumed velocity profile we could move ahead to obtain the what would be the boundary layer growth in the case of turbulent flow and what would be the friction factor expression. We then uh, use the same concept for the treatment of thermal boundary layer. In thermal boundary layer we saw that uh, it is the equation of energy applicable inside the thermal boundary layer after the standard simplifications which are boundary layer approximations this equation is coupled to the th velocity boundary layer equation namely the Navier Stokes equation for flow inside uh, the boundary layer. The coupling appears because of the appearance of velocity v x and v y in the energy equation. So, it is a one way coupling. We showed in previous classes how to solve this thermal boundary layer growth and the velocity when the temperature gradient at the solid liquid interface uh, through the simultaneous solution of the momentum equation as well as the energy equation. So, for laminar flow we have obtained an expression for Nusselt number which is the convective heat transfer coefficient multiplied by help by a length scale divided by the thermal conductivity of the fluid this Nusselt number was related to two dimensionless groups which appeared automatically through the non dimensionalization of the governing equation namely the Reynolds number and the Prandtl number. So, we got compact expressions of Nusselt number 
the with the engineering parameter convective heat transfer coefficient embedded into the Nusselt number. So, that is the h is the one that we would like to evaluate and the corresponding dimensionless group is Nusselt number. So, we got relationship between Nusselt number, Prandtl number and Reynolds number with a constant in front of it, but that was for laminar flow. I did not say anything about the turbulent flow inside a thermal boundary layer. The treatment of turbulent flow inside a thermal boundary layer is more complicated, more complex because you are going to have transfer of heat not, not only by conduction and convection, there will be the formation of eddies and these eddies would carry additional heat, additional energy for flow when for the for the case when the flow inside the boundary layer turns turns to be turbulent so the presence of the eddies uh, creates or imposes additional problems in the solving the energy equation first of all we do not know what would be the right form of energy equation so even if we express the energy equation in the same way as we have done for the case of uh, momentum boundary layer that is in terms of fluctuating components it is almost intractable. So, we have to think of some ways to use the solutions that we have already obtained for the case of momentum boundary layer both in laminar flow as well as in turbulent flow is there any way to use to project those relations and or correlations for the case of turbulent flow in thermal boundary layer. So, that means, I am trying to find an analogy a logical set of conditions which must be met. So, that the results of momentum transfer in turbulent flow can be projected and to obtain the results connecting the dimensionless groups relevant dimensionless groups for the case of turbulent flow inside a thermal boundary layer. And if we can establish this transformation, then the same logic can also be obtained to can also be used to obtain the relation between the relevant parameters in for mass transfer inside the concentration boundary layer. The way we have the velocity boundary layer, we have seen what is a thermal boundary layer. Similar to thermal boundary layer, I will also have the concentration boundary layer in which the species concentration would change from some value on the solid plate to a constant value in the free stream of the flowing solution above the solid plate. So, the results of it, so it would be it would be uh, the objective as I mentioned at the beginning of the course the objective objective of this course would be how, why and when we can transform the relations obtained in hydrodynamic part of the boundary solution of the hydrodynamic boundary layer. How can we use that as solution of the thermal boundary layer and then for the concentration or the mass transfer boundary layer. So, I am not going to do that right now that would be the last topic of this course. So, I would very quickly go through some of the salient features of the mass transfer process which is complicated because now we are dealing with mixtures of at least two components maybe a solute and a solvent. So, at least two species are present in the situ in the case where we are having net transport of one species from one point to the other. Now, the net transport of the species from one point to the other exactly like in the case of heat transfer it can take place because of actual flow from point A to point B which carries component 1 from A to B. So, that is due to the imposed flow of the solution from point A to point B carrying component A from one location to the other, which is nothing but the convective motion of the species, the motion of the species due to convection imposed on the on the on the flow field. There would be another way by which mass gets transported, which is similar to the conduction 
heat transfer heat transfer by conduction so whenever there is a temperature gradient even if there is no flow we will still have heat transfer because of molecular because of by means because of molecular mechanism so this conductive heat transfer which depends not only on the concentration difference but on the gradient of concentration between gradient of temperature between two points exactly similar phenomena exists for mass transfer as well which are aptly called the diffusive mass transfer so in diffusion or diffusive mass transfer mass travels from one location to the other if there is an imposed concentration gradient the concentration gradient may exist as a result of several uh, several conditions but if there is a temperature if there is a concentration gradient then mass gets transferred to from one point to the other so similar to heat flux similar to fourier's law similar to newton's law of viscosity the mass flux as in the case of heat flux is proportional to the concentration gradient think of the similarity with uh, uh, temperature gradient so mass flux is proportional to the concentration gradient and the proportionality constant with a minus sign since mass always travels from high concentration to low concentration the constant of this expression is commonly known as the diffusivity of 1 in 2 it's expressed in d in the form d with the subscript ab which is the constant which is the diffusion coefficient of a in b now some of the relations the, the this is known as the fick's law of diffusion which like newton's law or fourier's law is a phenomenological equation it cannot be derived it can it was arrived by looking at the data of many experiments over a large range of concentrations and it was found that the mass flux is always proportional to the concentration gradient. So, before we use Fick's law and other physical boundary conditions in solving in modeling the mass transfer process the same way we have done for heat transfer it would be uh, I would like to go quickly through the relations the established relation, relations in mass transfer that I am sure you already know it is only going to be a recapitulation of what you have studied in your mass transfer 1 or mass transfer 2 courses. So, our study of mass transfer and modeling of processes involving mass transfer the mass transport process we under we starts with the fact with the with the realization that mass transfer is a more complicated process as compared to uh, momentum transfer or heat transfer because more than one species is involved. So, you will have at least two species and in multi component systems you will have more than one species which are present more than two species which are present in the system and therefore, the not only the diffusion coefficients are going to be different. However, the motion of the one species the motion of the molecules of one species in a medium will start to affect the molecules of the medium as well. So, when component A is rapidly diffusing through a stagnant medium of, comp comp of B, then the motion of A molecules can create a movement a flow of the B molecules as well. So, mass transfer is definitely more complicated than heat and momentum transfer. So, we will quickly first go through some of the modeling exercises of mass transfer, some of the relevant boundary conditions of mass transfer and then we will come back to the to the last part of the course which is analogy between these different processes. So, our study of mass transfer begins with some of the definitions that I am sure you all of you are aware of or you have studied at some point of time, but I will go through it once again. So, the mass concentration is essentially the mass of species I per unit volume of this solution. Similarly, the molar concentration is simply rho I by m I, where m I is the molecular weight of component I. So, this is the number of moles of I per unit volume of the solution. The mass fraction is simply divided as the mass concentration divided by the total concentration 
the mole fraction x i is C i by C the molar concentration of one species divided by the total molar concentration. And of course, if you add rho a and rho b for a for a binary mixture, then the mass concentration of a and mass concentration of b when added together would give you the mass density of the solution. In this rho a as rho a is simply C a times m a and uh, w a which is the mass fraction is simply going to be rho a by rho. As with the case of mass density, mass density similarly the molar density of the solution is simply a sum of the individual molar densities and we understand that x a which is the mole fraction x a plus x b equal to 1 the same way weight fraction sum would be equal to 1 and these relations are self explanatory. So, we have all seen these e expressions before and we will see how these expressions will be used later on to understand to express the mass transport process uh, in, in, in a system where we have both convection as well as the diffusive mass transfer. So, coming back to some of the other equations other definitions that one can think of one, one, one uses in mass transfer process there is something called local mass average velocity which is simply rho i v i divided by summation of rho i over all the species. So, this is the mass average velocity in the same way you have the mass average velocity you can also find out will also express the molar average velocity where simply the mass concentration is replaced by the molar concentration. So, the denominator is the total mass concentration whereas, the denominator over here is the total molar concentration of the solution. Now, whenever something whenever a component moves in uh, it moves in a solution then you can either fix the coordinate systems and keep them stationary. So, the two definitions of mass average velocity and molar average velocity that I have shown you before are with respect to stationary axis. Now, the mass average velocity it can also be used let us say I have a, 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 a portion of a solution in which there is a diffusing species A and this entire species has some mass average velocity with which it is let us say moving in this direction. However, the species A present in it has a different velocity because it is also diffusing as a result of the bulk flow as well as as a result of a concentration gradient imposed on it. So, if we want to separate the diffusion from the bulk motion of the fluid then the diffusion velocity is something which is exclusively for due to diffusion for a species A and therefore, the diffusion velocity is is expressed as v i that is the velocity of the ith species subtract from that the local mass average velocity. So, the difference in velocity the additional velocity that the ith component has is over the mass average velocity is termed as the diffusion velocity. So, v i the velocity of the ith species minus the local mass average velocity is termed as the diffusion velocity of i with respect to v. Now, the way you have expressed the diffusion velocity where the basis is taken as the local mass average velocity you can take the basis as local molar average velocity as in v star. So, the component velocity the relative velocity of the component can be expressed with respect to the mass average velocity or with respect to the molar average velocity both are diffusion velocities one is with respect to v the other is with respect to the molar average velocity. So, these are the two diffusion velocities that are quite commonly used for the in case of in for mass transfer and this velocity the of the velocity of this if you expand it it is simply going to be 1 by rho a 1 by rho times rho a v a plus rho b v b in which if you take the ratio of rho a by rho it is simply going to be the 
uh, the weight the weight fraction of component A and similarly V star which is the local molar average velocity if you expand this it is simply going to be 1 by total concentration then molar concentration of A, molar concentration of B and the velocities of A and B and C A by C is nothing but the fraction the mole fraction of component A and mole fraction of component B. So, these two relations directly follow from the definition of the mass average velocity or the molar average velocity. Now, since we have defined the diffusion velocities in this way. Now, the diffusion velocities can then be converted to fluxes. So, one would be a molar flux and the other would be a, a, a mass flux. So, in terms of stationary coordinates, it is simply going to be rho i times v i if you express it in terms of mass or if you express in terms of moles, it is simply going to be c i v i. These v i's are with respect to stationary coordinates. When you bring the same mass flux or molar flux and take the average velocity, average velocity v bar to be the basis. So, relative to the mass average velocity, the, the mass flux or the molar flux denoted by j or capital J for the ith species is simply going to be rho i times the relative velocity where for the relative velocity we use the mass average velocity. So, it can either be expressed in terms of mass or it can be expressed in terms of moles. Same thing if we do in terms of molar average velocity. So, this is in terms of stationary coordinates where the velocity is 0, where v is 0. So, it is rho i v i. If I have a mass average velocity and I express relative to the mass average velocity, it is simply going to be v i minus v. If I do it in terms of molar average velocity, it is going to be v i minus v star for the case of mass and for the case of moles, it is simply going to be c i. Now, uh, <clears throat> this flux, be it mass flux or molar flux, is generally expressed the molar flux where g star, if you look at g star, this is the molar flux of the i h species when the flux is relative to the molar average velocity, which is so j i is equal to c i times v i minus v star. This molar flux is proportional to the concentration gradient that is the statement of Fick's law. So, Fick's law essentially tells us that the molar flux j i star is proportional to the concentration gradient. So, Fick's law is simply the flux molar flux of component A when expressed with respect to the aver molar average velocity is simply minus d a b times divergence of x a. So, if c is constant I can put c inside it is simply the other way of writing it is times c a. So, this for a rectangular coordinate system can be written as minus d a b times del c a del x plus del c a del y plus del c a del z. So, see the similarity that we have for the k for the k with with heat transfer and with mass transfer. So, this is the statement of Fick's law and from our definition of molar flux, this is the definition of the molar flux when expressed in terms of v star. So, I expand it and C A V A is nothing but the molar flux of A and then when you express this v star the formula would simply be C A V A plus C B V B by C. C A by C is the molar uh, the mole fraction. So, your J A is equal to N A minus X A times N A plus N B. Plug it in here and what you have is another form of another form of fixed law. So, this is this N A 
is relative to stationary coordinate and what it tells is that it, the molar flux of component A relative to stationary coordinates from here is a sum is an algebraic sum of x a times n a plus n b, where x a times n a plus n b is the flux due to the due to the bulk motion of the fluid. So, C a times V star, V star denotes the molar average velocity. So, if you have a bulk velocity present bulk motion present in the fluid, it is also going to contribute to a flux of A. As I said, the, the species A can move from point A to point B if there is a bulk motion. There may not be any difference any difference in concentration. So, a sugar solution a constant concentration sugar solution may be forced may be allowed to move from point A to point B by imposing a pressure gradient. There is no diffusion since the concentration is the same everywhere, but what you have is a bulk motion of the sugar molecules from point A to point B. So, this kind of bulk motion imposed by the flow only is the significance of the first term that we have here which is x a times n a plus n b. So, this is due to bulk motion. Sometimes in addition to bulk motion or even in absence of bulk motion you have concentration difference. So, if you have concentration difference or the more correctly if you have a concentration gradient present in the system then this is going to give rise to a diffusive motion of A species A. So, the total effective motion of species A is the algebraic sum of the species movement due to bulk motion and or the species movement due to a concentration gradient imposed due to certain conditions present in it. So, therefore, uh, the problem of Fick's law is to be resolved the first thing that needs to be resolved is what is how to get rid of n b from the expression of n a. So, n a is x a times n a plus n b minus d a b del of concentration of a. So, first of all it may be mentioned that it is a diffusion only process that means there is no imposed bulk flow. So, if it is a diffusion only process then the first term on the right hand side which signifies bulk motion can be dropped. So, that is one way of getting rid of n b which is the unknown which is which is which appears in this expression. So, if it is a bulk motion if it is a diffusive motion only situation then this can be dropped. In some cases there would be a relation between n a and n b which arises due to some other factors. For example, it could be a case of equimolar counter diffusion that means, for one mole of A moving in this direction one mole of B is moving in the opposite direction. So, if this is a case of equimolar counter diffusion where N A is going to be equal to minus N B for that specific case n a is going to be equal to minus n b and therefore, this term the contribution of this term would be 0. So, the expression would be same as that of diffusive motion only situation, but for a different reason since it is a equimolar counter diffusion n a and n b would cancel out each other. There are some in some cases the stoichiometry of the reaction if it is a reacting system. Let us say 3 moles of A comes and reacts on a catalyst surface generating 2 moles of B which then travel in the reverse direction towards the bulk. 
So, for every 3 molecules of A coming to a specific direction, 2 molecules of B would have to travel in the opposite direction at steady state in order to maintain the concentration at each point independent of time. So, the concentration of A may vary, concentration of B may vary, but the concentration at a fixed location is no, will not vary with time. So, that is that's what the steady state is. So, in some cases stoichiometry of the reaction or stoichiometry of the reaction taking place between two reacting components would give you some idea between the relation between what how N A is related to N B. So, in absence of any such generalization, any such simplification, the expression to be used for the molar flux of component A will consist of two terms, one due to bulk motion and the other due to the concentration gradient. So, this d a b which is the which is the diffusion coefficient of a and b for they behave slightly differently for gases and for liquids. Okay. So, um, both of them increase with an increase in, in, in temperature. So, as the temperature increases this d a b it is a function of pressure, temperature and it is also a function of it could be a function of composition, composition of the gas mixture. So, the gases for gases and liquids with increase in temperature d a b increases and uh, at low density it is almost composition independent for the case of for the case of gases. So, what we have then we need to see the similarity between d a b which is the mass diffusion coefficient expressed either in terms of mass or in terms of mole compare that with with gamma which is mu by rho and compare that with k by rho c p which is alpha. So, if you compare d a b the diffusion coefficient of a in b mu by rho which is the kinematic viscosity and k by rho c p which is the which is the thermal diffusivity. So, momentum diffusivity, thermal diffusivity and mass diffusivity all will have units of meter square per second. So, these three are similar in nature the mass diffusivity, the momentum diffusivity and the thermal diffusivity they have the same unit as meter square per second and all of them denote the transport of mass, the transport of momentum or the transport of energy when you impose a concentration gradient, a velocity gradient or a temperature gradient. So, this would be the beginning the start of the uh, start of the analogy finding the analogy between different processes heat transfer, mass transfer and momentum transfer. But before we reach that point, uh, what I would do in the subsequent classes 3 or 4 or 4 or 5 classes uh, after today is uh, to show you examples by which first of all a shell component balance can be used can be used to obtain the concentration profile of a specific component in a system where it is a diffusion only process where both diffusion and diffusion and bulk motion convection is present and different ways by which N A can be related to N B the molar flux of A and the molar flux of B what is the relation between them apart from counter diffusion equimolar counter diffusion and, and, and so on. And finally, the like heat generation in the case of energy equation we can also have generation of a species due to reaction generation or depletion of species due to reaction in a medium in which A is diffusing. So, if A is diffusing and as it diffuses it reacts with another reactant B present in it then A is going to get depleted as it as it moves in the solution. 
So, reaction chemical reaction homogeneous chemical reaction can act as a source or a sink term in the mass balance equation. So, when we write the shell balance of shell component balance the same way we have done for uh, for the previous cases heat transfer and momentum transfer. The source or sink term for example, a nuclear heat source or an electrical heat source the equivalent of that in the case of mass transfer would be if there is a reaction which is consuming A or a reaction which is producing A in the entire domain of transfer of A from point 1 to point 2. So, a homogeneous reaction would appear as a source or sink term in the governing equation. So, contrary to that if it is a heterogeneous reaction that means, if it is a let us say for let us say it is a catalytic reaction where this is the catalyst surface and the reaction of A getting converted to B is going to take place only on the cat catalyst surface it is a heterogeneous reaction. Therefore, A has to diffuse and reach at this point where it gets converted to B and the products will diffuse back to the mainstream. In that case since in the path of diffusing A it does not encounter any reaction generation or depletion. The generation or depletion takes place only at a specified location that is on the catalyst heterogeneous reaction this condition would appear as a boundary condition in the governing equation. So, we have to keep in mind the difference between the heterogeneous reaction and the homogeneous reaction one in which it appears uh, it appears as a source or sink term in the governing equation itself <coughs> and the other where it appears as a boundary condition. So, we will see examples of that examples of modeling the process in the uh, coming four or five classes and then we will finally, move to the final part of this is, uh, of this uh, course which is uh, to see to evaluate the analogy between heat mass and momentum transfer.